right, so here's our third story. It's called Arthur Garber the Harbor Barber by Joe Frank. In a seaside town on a cozy little bay, ships of all kinds often dock for the day. There a man lives, loved by tourists and fishers, known through the world to do magic with scissors. With his flawlessly cut and coiffed pompadour, Arthur Garber greets his visitors ashore. Ahoy there, he says as he shakes a wet hand, come into my shop. Welcome to land. A fisherman sits down in Arthur's red chair. He gives him a spiffy shag cut with much flair. The fisherman cheers, I'll catch more fish than ever. He returns to the sea, having never looked better. flashy white cruise ship floats up with fanfare, and here come the folks in fluorescent swimwear. Sunburned, well-fed, and rested to boot, the cruisers pile in, plump like overripe fruit. Next comes the crew from a huge naval fleet. They need high and tight cuts, especially neat. Out come the clippers that shear extra short. Once they're clean cut, they'll be leaving the port. Captains of speedboats are always quick work. Rascals on rafts must look good when they smirk. Owners of houseboats want trouble-free mains. Coast guards need flock locks to withstand heavy rains. One bright summer day, Arthur saw in the distance a crude raft rider in need of assistance. When the castaway landed, a tale he did tell of a ship overturned by a tropical swell. For more than a year, I've been lost out to sea. My kids must wonder what happened to me. Catching the sight of this, his frightful reflection, he burst into tears, fearing family rejection. I can't return home, he wept. I'm a mess. But Arthur took pity and stepped up to the test. Come here, my good man. Sit down in my chair. Arthur sharpened his shears and took stock of the hair. There was simply so much of it, frazzled and frizzy, anyone else would have left feeling dizzy. What followed then became a maritime myth, a castaway saved by a master hairsmith. The sun rose and set, the tide came and went. Arthur chopped, trimmed, and teased until he was spent. And from under a pelt so wild and frightful emerged a young man who looked rather delightful. Strikingly styled, the fellow's spirit did swell. He thanked Arthur Garber and bid him farewell. His landlubber family must miss him so much. He hurried off shouting, I'll be in touch. Time and tide cycled as they do without fail. Arthur's passion for hairstyling never did pale. He thought of his castaway friend day and night as he was he safe at home? Did he make it all right? Then into the bay flew a bird with a note, the contents of which simply made Arthur float. Dear Arthur, it read, you sure saved my hide. When I returned home, my crew filled with pride. We think you're the best, so we've built a pontoon, and with any luck, we'll be seeing you soon. Be you the captain of yacht or sailor of seas, take from this story whatever you please. 
but for quality cuts, you need not float farther than the bay with the shop of the great harbor barber. The end. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a craft that I did that you can do. It's a water bottle fish. And you can take whatever you have at home, sand, glitter, I have toothpicks and Q-tips and beads and pom-poms and you just put it in there and you make some fins and glue them on and then there you go, water bottle fish. Okay, all right, the second one I have, I'll show you step by step. So, you have your paper plate, you fold it and cut it in half. And then you take that and paint it. Both halves, one half, either way. I did red, but you can do whatever color you want. Just have fun with it, okay? And then while that's drying, you draw out your legs and claws for your crab. Take my crab. And then you fold them like an accordion. All six legs and two claws. And then you glue them on and draw eyes. And there you go, a paper plate crab. How fun. All right, thanks for coming. Bye.